Okay, so let's quickly look into socialization, uh, social organization, uh, and group. Okay, so it's going to be uh, a brief one. We'll just uh, take those key points, uh, social organization and group. Uh, some of you actually do not know the uh, contextual meaning of uh, these two topics that we are going to be taking, uh, social organization and group. Uh, please listen. And you know, group is key to the course sociology. It is a very key. So let's take um, the intended uh, learning outcomes first. Uh, just a minute. Okay, the intended learning outcomes. Uh, first, by the end of this uh, very lesson, you should be able to define the term social organization. Uh, you should also be able to explain the aspects of, uh, there are different aspects of social organizations. And uh, again, list and explain the levels of social organizations. There are levels, there are aspects. You should be able to do that by the end of this class. You should be able to define the concept of uh, group. Then uh, you also should be able to define, or sorry, justify why group exists. Why do groups uh, exist? Um, uh, uh, that's similar to the importance of group. And finally, you should be able to list and explain the stages of group formation, all right? Uh, for your information, the uh, PowerPoint uh, slide will be available for you to get all of these. So in case I am rushing, uh, please, you will get the PowerPoint on your uh, portal. All right, so next one, uh, social organization. Uh, it is a system in which individuals are, and uh, relationships are ordered, all right? It is the ordering. You can simply say it is the ordering of individuals and relationships with reference to the goals of society if you as if you are asked to write uh, do a pen on paper examination instead of following the conventional type of definition where everybody probably those who are good grammars have said it is a system in which individuals and relationships are ordered simply say it is a system where say, say it's an ordered individual uh, and relationships okay with reference to goals of the society just try to uh, think out of the box to get your own conceptual uh, terms here. Okay, so the key term is that uh, it, it it deals with the ordered. It has to order individuals. That's place individuals at different levels. Everybody have their different levels. For instance, in this class, I am the facilitator. You are the student. So by virtue of social organizations, social organization, we have been organized socially in such a way that naturally you are students at this time and i am your lecturer or your facilitator i hope that sinks in well um it is a system that has been conceived even before we were born all right so it has been socially organized in such a way that at every point in time you are ordered to be somewhere uh, playing a particular role okay uh as with reference all right with particular reference to the goals of society now the goal of society is that in this case that you have to be educated and so the social organization has naturally ordered us to have lecturers and students so as you progress at one point in time you belong to a particular uh, level right so it is an ordered relationship uh, where individuals are found at one particular level uh, in the society okay all right now let's move on to uh, the uh, Let's look at the aspects of social organization. There are different aspects. Let's look at them. We'll take them one by one. Now, uh, the different aspects of uh, social organizations, we have, um, it is a form of structure, right? That's the first aspect. It is a form of structure. And like I said, individuals and institutions that compose a society, uh, society is made up of individuals and institutions, are given sizes, I have explained this already, and positions. You are students, I am lecturers, I am a lecturer right now, okay? So we have uh, students and lecturers, we have workers and uh, 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 bosses, we have leaders and followers, all right? In an interrelated pattern, okay? So the society is, uh, is structured in a way that it is interrelated, where people are placed in different positions and in different sizes. Now, it is a process, okay? It is also a process. Uh, here, it is how the components of society 
or the social organization itself are ordered the social organization itself are ordered it is a process uh, from becoming students tomorrow you might become lecturers tomorrow you might become doctors tomorrow it might be something else so it's a process you move from one stage to the other so there are diff the two different aspects of social organization is that it is a structure right this as a form or structure and of course it is a process where which individuals must follow to meet up with the societal goal okay let's move on to the levels of social organization uh, there are different levels let's see we have the interpersonal level we have the group level and we have the total level now the first one has to do with individuals individuals one-on-one uh, -on -one type of uh, relationship one-on-one -on -one type of discussion now the second one as it uh, entails group it has to do with a group of people number of people interacting together living together now the total level which is the last one it has to do with the society as a whole so it's a simple thing if you are asked what are the levels of social organization you know, it has three levels from individuals which is interpersonal you move on to group and then the society as a whole all right and you know that the society is a composition of both the individuals and the group these two makes up the total level so let's take them one after the other after this explanation and so you can get a better understanding now the interpersonal uh, uh, level the interpersonal level uh, you can see an image here. it has to do with one-on-one -on -one, right one-on-one -on -one. you can see this person here to this uh, this one here to this there is no group uh, type, all right? It has to do with, uh, it occurs between persons. That interaction occurs between individuals. The most, it is the most elementary form of social organization. If you are asked, what is the most elementary form of social organization? You know, it is the interpersonal uh, type of uh, social organization. It exists at the interpersonal level. Example of such uh, uh, level of uh, social organization is between teachers and students, father and children pastor and followers leaders and followers okay uh, it has to do with some sort of one-on-one -on -one type of interaction now let's look at the group level the group level the group level of a social organization now in the group level you can see the image here it clearly shows a group of people bound together a group of people bound together and interacting together so it is made up of a large number of people with varied interest okay even though they are bound together they have different interests they're in a group but they are pursuing different interests so that is a different level of interaction so the first level of interaction in social organization is the interpersonal between individuals the second level is the group level which has to do with uh, a large number of individuals together but they have varied interests they have different interests okay like those of you who are in your class right now you are a group in one class, but you have different interests. Some are just here for the sake of being in class. They are not interested in the degree they want to earn. But some are here with the interest of coming out with a first class. Others are here if they give me a third class, I will just manage and go. Some are here if they give me two, one, second class upper. Well, I am fantastic. I will go. Okay, so different interests exist in a group. Uh, group behavior is central to social sciences. Now, uh, you know those programs that form the core of social sciences, sociology, criminology, political science, economics. Uh, what all of those try to study is group behavior. So this group level, it is very core, very key to the social sciences. All right, so let's take the last one, which is uh, the total level, the total level uh, of, soci of society. That, is, uh, that has to do with... Uh, a combination, like I said, of interpersonal and intergroup. What do we mean by intergroup? Uh, between groups, all right? Between groups. Uh, a, a type of relationship or interaction that happens between groups. You can see three groups here, all right? This one is uh, interpersonal. This one is uh, a group right here. So, but they are all interacting. They are all interacting. So, this, in other words, constitutes the society as a whole. Right, so at this, this is the highest level of social organization. The highest level of social organization. But it usually transcends from the interpersonal to the group and then to the total level of social organization. Right, so if you ask what are the three types of a social, uh, three, three levels of social organization, 
you should be able to know that we have uh, the interpersonal, we have the group, and we have the total level. Okay? So the total level is a combination of uh, the interpersonal and intergroup. The groups coming together, the personal interaction all put together. Um, we have uh, various uh, personal, institutional, and group roles are all related in this uh, type of uh, level of social organization. Uh, the, this interrelationship, okay? Massive type of interaction going on here. All right, so having said that, let's now um, look at the roles of individuals. Uh, what is the function of people in social organization? Social organization uh, is an organization of rules, all right? You can see that this is quite uh, uh, ambiguous. It's an organization of rules. What does that mean? It's an organization of different people performing different functions, all right? different functions. Some are doctors, some are students, some are lecturers, some are drivers, some are uh, law enforcement agents. Uh, that is the uh, role. Individuals play different roles in social organization. Um, at the highest level, which is the total level, uh, which is in other words referred to as the societal level, there are different individual roles embedded in it. All right, so every individual is a role player in any given society. Uh, that is simple enough. Uh, you know the role you are playing, even in the family. The parents have their different roles. Uh, you as, uh, uh, please, somebody, okay. Okay, um, you as uh, a child in the family, you know your role, all right? Institutions such as churches, mosques, etc., are role players as well. We talked about socialization, socialization, schools, mosques churches, they are all agents of uh, socialization and they play their roles, okay? Then the concern of social organization is to ensure that roles are ordered and positions are duly regulated. I have stressed this over and over. Um, social organization primarily is to ensure that people's roles are ordered and that positions are duly regulated. And that is why society moves seamlessly because everybody knows what to do at every point in time. All right, please uh, quickly take this uh, class activity one, uh, just to be sure that you can attempt these questions privately. Uh, what is social organization? Second one is list and explain <coughs> the aspect of social organization. Like I said, this will be available in your uh, portal to download, so you don't need to worry yourself if you are not getting it right now. Then uh, critically examine the levels of social organization, explain the roles of individuals in social organization. These are the areas that we have just discussed. So let's move into the key or the thesis of, the, of social sciences, which is groups, groups, groups. Uh, let's define groups. What exactly uh, is a group? Um, after this class, you should be able to uh, tell people what a group means. Now, a group is a number of people who interact with one another, are psychologically aware of one another, and perceive themselves to be a group. So that means they are socially bound. They are people who are socially bound, and they are aware they are members of that particular group. Okay? So uh, this definition captures it all, and it is given by Edgar, uh, Shane in 1965. Uh, the definition can be thrown and you are asked who is the proponent or the scholar behind that definition. Uh, this is the name. Okay? Alright. Uh, that's the name. Okay, so let's uh, look into this an all important uh, aspect. Why is it important to have group? Now, in your study material, you are going to see why a group. Why a group? I have removed the A all right just say why group okay why group in case you see such a question in your pen and paper examination you simply know the examiner is asking about the functions or the significance or the relevance or the importance of a group now the first is that uh, talents are being combined there's talent combination and the provision of solutions to unfamiliar problems a problem that is hydra-headed, a problem that is difficult to handle, 
it is best handled in a group where people make different suggestions and at the end of the day you come back with, you come out with a viable solution there are problems that cannot be handled by one individual so it needs group intervention you need people to sit down brainstorm and the group function in that aspect to provide viable solutions to unfamiliar problems. The second one is that group is, self, is a self-managing unit because different individuals perform different roles. And so a group can take care of itself to sustain itself and also take care of uh, members of the group. So it is a self-managing unit. It's a unit that is not dependent on uh, any other unit for each survivor. The group um, have resource cooperation, they learn the ideas together, and they manage, uh, the group manages itself, all right, to succession. Now, group leads to individual capacity building. Now, individuals who are in a group tend to learn new things. They tend to develop themselves as members of that group. So, they become better off than they came in. There is absolute capacity building for group members okay so those are just the three key uh, functions there may be others but for now let's stay with this now finally let's look into group development uh, group development uh, what are the stages of group development there are four key stages and these stages applies to our practical experience as we have seen uh, over time the first stage is the forming stage or you can call it the formation stage. That is the initial stage where the group is about to be formed. So people come together to form the group. Members at that particular stage, at that initial stage of uh, formation, they are polite. And most of them seem to be dull, as if the group will not work. Uh, you can, uh, if you have your groups, your class groups, where you have your WhatsApp, uh, Telegram groups, you can see that from the beginning, it looks as if uh, nothing is going to work. People tend to be uh, very polite, dull, because they want to really understand what's going on. Uh, all right, so at some point, there's this personal conflict which is directed at individuals, and it can be very destructive at that initial stage. That happens, all right, at that formation stage. The stage two is the storming, storming stage. This is the most critical stage uh, in uh, group development. Storming, as the name implies. Uh, it looks like uh, hell will be break loose at that particular stage. Leaders, in fact, the group admins at that stage are really attacked. They are told what to do. Um, they are yelled at at every point in time. Uh, factions are formed. You have different uh, factions. It happens, especially even in uh, official settings. Uh, no one listens, and some are still unwilling. Okay, some members of the group are very unwilling to say something. They are not. They are just there as observers. It happens. Even in your social media platforms, you have them. Uh, they call some readers' association. Uh, some somebody will tell you is the chairman of readers' association. They don't talk. They are just there at that stage of the group. So you have such people like that. Now the third, the third stage is the norming norm. You are familiar with the concept of norm. Is the norming group uh, where the group members begin to realize the benefit of the group they, are, they begin to uh, institutionalize things all right uh, there are procedures of doing things there are norms in place the infighting seems to subside people tend to be themselves members now gain that security that self-esteem to express themselves air out their views all right so at that norming stage the group begins For any group to form, it passes through the stages. Uh, so we're done with the uh, storming stage. We're now looking at the norming stage. The norming stage, like we said, is the group is the stage where there is a bit of uh, stability, right? And um, thanks. And uh, uh, there's recognition. Members begin to recognize the benefit of uh, that uh, of being uh, in the group. The infighting that exists in the storming group begin to uh, subside and members begin to gain security, okay? And so they feel free. Those who were not talking may now begin to talk at that stage, okay? Now, the fourth stage is the performing group, the performing group. This is the last stage and the highest stage. 
uh, any group that doesn't get to this stage tends to die out naturally. So this uh, group settles on a system that allows free and frank exchange of, view, of views and group support. Uh, at this stage, the, there's a proper structure. Everybody knows the common norms, the common rules guiding the uh, group. And um, the group offers adequate support to its members, all right? It is a full-fledged group at this point, and so the group is running optimally. So these are the four stages in group formation in the group development. You have the forming stage, which is the initial stage, the storming stage, the most critical stage, where the group can e either be made or be marred. The group can die at this stage. If it survives this stage, then it moves on to the next stage, which is the norming stage. And that is where, um, at that stage, the standards and structures that are, are placed, and at the performing stage, this is the last stage, the group is running free. It's running free. Okay, uh, so um, we have now come to the end of these topics. I am happy that I just uh, had to deal with these topics anyhow. And please bear with me. I will ensure that you have enough materials to uh, study on these uh, topics. Okay, so let's uh, take one last uh, uh, class activity again. Uh, please just try to attempt this privately. Uh, what is a group? Why is group necessary? Uh, why group? What is the significance of group? Uh, list and explain the stages of group development. We have four stages. You already know that. Please, you should be able to list and explain them. All right. Okay. So um, there are areas we may not be able to cover, and I will want you to do that as a self-study. You need to uh, do this as a self-study. Please uh, read about the following sub-areas on your own. Informal and formal groups. Okay primary and secondary groups these are very uh, uh, key areas they are not too bulky and so you can handle them on your own in group and out group group cohesiveness and effectiveness and the last one is team process please take your time uh, read all of this okay just to add up to your knowledge uh, ensure you do this this is important because we are not going to be facilitating these areas okay so this is the area. Thank you.